Hey traders, I promised you some extra footage on a few names that we discussed today. Uh, again, the recap was um, not too long, but uh, you know I have so much to share, but it's hard to put it all on paper or in uh, you know in, in one video. But the sentiment is to be cautious. Do not at least not be to be a little bit less sure of the whatever position you're taking, then you're less likely to get hurt. Okay, so let's delve into a few names. I'll start with Twitter. Uh, anniversary, I believe. One year. And it seems like it's been there forever, but uh, in any case, this is the area where Price really wants to play, that box. I can't remember when we drew it. And this is the line in the sand that it's used before, at least when the debacles happened in the... Uh, introduction and then from which it bounced so this is a significant line the red one then it revisited it here and rejected it and then revisited it here and then whoosh okay so if this was an overreaction I can ignore it I'll tell you why and then uh, we bounced off of that level again and then here we are back at the level again so I don't like these and I don't like these. It's like outliers. If you ignore the outliers, then you ignore some of the noise. However, they did happen, okay? So we were at 40, uh, but it could be, I think it was in the 30s today. I'm pretty sure it was, 39 something. Well, it could be a 30, because it was a 30 about six months ago. So, and right now everybody's hating on uh, Costello. So they don't like management. They didn't like the, the, the uh, service. They think it's too confusing. I don't know what's confusing about it, but uh, I've been using it for a long time, so I don't. I have a. I don't have a clear opinion of it that way because I'm. I'm in the box, so to speak. I'm biased. Long term, my statement on Twitter is somebody will figure it out. Somebody will figure it out. But I say somebody because they could be bought out. There's no way they're going to let something that get used billions of times a month go to waste. They, as in whoever has money it is such a powerful way of disseminating information I don't care about Facebook whatever you say a billion users it doesn't even come close if I wanted to say something I can say it right now and I can reach the whole world I can't do that with Facebook uh, I can make myself available at Facebook but if I put the right hashtag it'll get to everybody that's actually interested in that hashtag so at least the way I see it it is less noise and more value from the use of Twitter not the company you know Facebook they're bringing in cash they have a billion and some users no doubt but Twitter the use of it people complain about the use of it and that's the strength I see so I cannot so obviously my thesis doesn't gem with the price so I'm comfortable waiting on Twitter but I think it's at a place where somebody can dabble into trying to catch this falling knife. How? I could probably do a credit put spread, but I'd leave some room. I don't know what kind of rates it carries, like uh, premiums, I should say. Uh, I haven't looked at it recently um, because of the fact I'm still hearing so much negative sentiment about it that I'm not in a rush to do anything with it. So let me take a peek while I have you here on the phone. <laughs> Um, Twitter, let's say November, let's go to November itself, the month of November. And if I wanted to do a credit put spread in the 35 area, there's not much money in it. So I would have to go a lot longer than that and commit to it, say, to December. So I'm not in a rush. It's going to be a 40-day trade or at least. And uh, there's not, like if I wanted to do a 34 right here uh, spread, it'll pay me 13 cents on a dollar spread so that's not bad so I can take a credit put spread right here at 34 33 for 13 cents or make it 35 if I'm really aggressive 33 34 so sell the 35 put buy the 34 put to limit the risk and for that I collect 17 cents and then I wait if price does not come here between here and this or on the closing day of December if it's not here if it's higher then I keep all that money I can make it a two dollar wide spread and make it worth my while a little more so it's not a bad trade I, do, I don't hate it I just think with markets being at all-time highs it, it inherently has another thing yet against it sentiment price action um, 
I mean, you think this is a long time selling? Look at that. So there's no rush to catch that knife. But if I do want to catch it, I'll do it a credit put spread. Um, I may even do it uh, an iron condor, but I don't like to do that if I'm expecting a bounce off of this level. So no rush on Twitter. Uh, patience, I think. Um, it's attractive based on the level in the previous bounces. But, you know, because of, anyway, the, I, I already said enough about it. So Starbucks... I am long Starbucks via lotto ticket <laughs> that went bad. Um, so I'm holding calls in Starbucks. And what did it do today? It was green today. I like it. So I'm hol holding $80 calls. Obviously, I'm in Hopium territory. But they were cheap and they're naked calls now. So I'm in it to win it, so to speak. If the market runs, woohoo, I'll be profiting on Starbucks. You never know. I, I like the company. I think we can get better entry points from here than here. Uh, if I expand it to two years, let me see if I can get better intelligence on the levels, obviously. Uh, you can see that it's emphatically playing in this new territory here above 69. Um, it's revisited it a few times, so it has downside potential. And if it does break this line right here for whatever reason, I just can't see why, uh, there's a lot of void here. So, cautious. You see why Look, rejection, rejection. You see why I can, yeah, for the third time might break through. That's entirely possible. That's why I'm holding the calls. <laughs> but uh, lower prices are possible. So caution there. Okay, we talked about Starbucks with somebody. Oh, beloved Priceline. They uh, reported they got punished almost 10%. And again, I said it before, I'll say it again. They got punished for saying something that's going to be less good going forward. They didn't miss on numbers or anything. They just said, going forward, we're going to be cautious because of Europe. That's all they said. So now it's back down to, under this yellow line right there. Um, today's candle was extremely uh, indecisive, a doji, but red. And Every day after the report, it had people come out and reiterate and raise price or maybe cut the price a little bit. But everybody stood behind it. They all said, oh, we're in it to win it. We're in it for the long haul. It's a good company. It's just, a, I'll buy it here. Yet, nobody's putting their money where their mouth is. They're red, 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 red. So even though it gets a little bit green and then it loses it red. I'm not in a rush to catch it because it can go another $50 in a day for no reason. So this is an important step right here. And let me zoom out to two years. A lot of lines here. Just ignore the lines. They say something to me, but sometimes I zoom out. If I see a line coming in from before, I zoom out to see where the heck it came from. This was the line I was looking at. So you can see it just goes up in echelons. And uh, I'm not in a rush. I want to see how it handles this one. It 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 can it's conceivable. I mean, this guy moves fast, really fast, and it falls long too. Look at this length. Look at this length. There's no reason why it shouldn't repeat here. So again, there's no rush to catch Priceline. I know some of us uh, already traded it, not me, but I know people who have. I'm not in a rush. Especially, again, there's the big uh, ominous cloud of being at all-time highs for the market, and I'm going to revisit that. All right, Priceline Google. Somebody asked me if it's okay uh, if it's time to get some Google calls. Well, this would be a good way of catching a falling knife via calls as long as it's a small position. Um, but Google itself has negative sentiment. What, what does that mean? Too many people see wrong things and bad things for Google. So uh, just, you know, death cross happening right there. Uh, for me, it's not a sell trigger, but it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You got falling peaks, meaning whether it's at three falling peaks technically or not, meaning lower highs. You know, ignore this because this was the deep valley. Let's say it didn't happen, outlier. You get falling peaks, you know. So I've even, technically you can make an argument that it's going to come down to 500 again. This is the Goog L, the more expensive one. So if, if so, I'd rather wait. I think we may, we may get better entry points for Google. I like it. Now, yesterday's headline for Apple could be a game changer for Google. Apple Maps didn't fly, so not necessarily that they're going to be able to do the engine, search engine. So I, why not wait a little bit? And if I do 
a credit put spread, I'll make sure to do a credit call spread instead. This week we had clear vision that Google was shortable. So if somebody did a credit put spread, and I know a few of you did, uh, then the credit call spread would, was in order. In fact, if I did a November credit put spread, I would have done this week's credit call spread because that'll expire and then make the November entry break even point even lower. I can withstand more heat. Okay, so that's the Goog and the Goog out. The Goog is the same thing, uh, sentiment is just a little bit lower in uh, price ranges. So that's all. Also, somebody talked about the gold, GLD. I have not traded gold in a while. I think it's a rigged market. Now, I read somewhere that it, only a handful of people control it, control so much of it that it's just a rigged market. Now, in theory, gold is rare and getting rarer. By that, I mean it's getting a lot harder to get it out of the ground. So its rare, rarity is becoming even more pronounced. So why is it crashing in price? That doesn't make sense. Something this valuable that's getting more valuable should never drop in price. I'd understand fits and, and you know little blips here and there, but this is two years. That does not look like a commodity that's running out <laughs> and as hard or a rare commodity. That looks like uh, something that we don't really use anymore. If we all switch to electric cars and this was oil then I'd understand but this is gold five years then the picture comes clearer okay this ramp may have been too high so really if you want to smooth it all out just use the crayon we should be here so yes gold is underpriced but look at that blue line I drew this is five years by the way I drew this blue line whenever I did, I don't remember, but it was, uh, I'll, I'll go to 10 to see, but before we lose it, bounce, you know, we hit it a couple times, two, three times before we broke out of it, you know, from here, 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 broke out, bounced off of it, and never looked back, until recently, boing, and then again, boing, almost, boing, and now, sorry about the noises, it just makes the point what do I see here in this box right here what do I see even though we're bouncing off of a well first of all we pierced it but what do I see lower highs so the bounces the bounces because bulls start buying they got oomph they defend it so it bounces they defend it again it bounces but a little bit less than here so it seems like they're getting tired they gets here they bounce it even less than the first time and the first time and the second time so bounce it look how much smaller is the bounce and the third time didn't hold and they went under so what are they gonna do with the line now you know the bounces are getting smaller so the push from the bulls is getting weaker and weaker that's what concerns me so why rush in there's nothing there's no rule that says gold cannot be lower than 100 or GLD cannot be lower than where it is right now let me expand it to 10 years oh, we don't have enough of oh there we go this is the bounce right here the blue bounce what happened before it well we were around here so 95 to 100 for a little bit but then everything was below that so I'm not in a rush to get into gold and I haven't traded gold in a long time because it's just above my pay grade let's put it this way okay so that's my thoughts on gold Chipotle I know I mentioned it before CMG Chipotle Mexican group they reported and they didn't like it the traders they sold it and they bounced emphatically and now you can totally see a nice uptrend a viable uptrend i can go along something like that um and then you know we'll see how it handles when it hits the all-time highs or the recent highs or whatever so it broke that green and now we're still below the green and remember i mentioned that um how is it going to handle the green once it gets to it from the downside so far it's been uh, resistance and there's a little flag going on here so I could go along it but cautiously so if I can get some premium down here that's how I would do it um, and let me take a peek make the video a little bit longer but I'm sure you would appreciate it okay 
I'm running out of energy here. Come on, platform. I have another platform open on another window, so I don't have switch windows on you. Okay, the 600 level in December pays 55 cents. So I can go lower than 600 for December and still get a decent premium. Uh, for November, probably not so, but let me see in November. For November to get a decent premium, I probably have to step up to like 620, but it'll be two and a half dollars uh, spread. So, you know, potato, potato, whichever is more attractive to you. But I make sure to make it a credit call spread as well, so make it an iron condor, I should say. So I would do a credit put spread here if I'm brave enough or lower for December. And because look, several bounces here before, and do a credit call spread way up here, leave a lot of room. This bad boy runs, and then be comfortable. And that's a trade that's gonna survive 30 days and could pay, you know, 10% yield on the money risk, depend on which uh, spread, even maybe even more, depends. So Chipotle is tradable, and. Um, I uh, I know a few of you took the trades, and I like the levels where you actually took them. I also saw a few, I talked to somebody today who actually mentioned that they liked eBay, and I liked eBay at 50. I like it a little bit less where it is right now, at 53 or so. Yes, it's a nice rebound, but every time it does a nice rebound, it gives it right back up. It's too choppy for eBay. I liked it when they sold it hard here on the news of Apple Pay and then um, I was right to like it because it immediately bounced right back up but then when the market sold off forget about it it got hammered. So again this is an outlier scratch it out of the book they bounced again off the 50 that's why I say I liked it at 50. So if I can get premium for eBay around 49, 48 I may be brave enough to take a credit put spread knowing that I'm gonna take some heat but if that's the case why not wait you know if i'm desperate to go long it yes call spreads are good better than credit put spread so if, if you took a call spread or you did a call calendar even better a call calendar would uh, mean that okay i sell a call here short term i buy a call same level longer term and uh, if i got it right this one will expire worthless and it would have helped finance the one that's now a lot more expensive if eBay continues on out. For example, I'll sell the November 55 and buy the December 55 calls. So if uh, the November, by uh, mid of November on the expiration date, with, which is 15 days from now, expires worthless, then I got into the one for December for cheaper because I financed part of it by selling the one that expired worthless. Even if I keep the both and price runs up, the value of the whole position becomes more expensive and then I can sell it for more than what I bought it for and that's profit all by itself there. I don't have to wait until December. Up to you. Um, also somebody, a good time to mention that somebody mentioned, not with regards to eBay, mentioned about uh, call flies, butterflies. Butterflies are a cheap way of taking a theoretical good... Um, potentially good position that pays well meaning you invest 30 cents and the upside is four dollars but it's such a threading the needle trade that it really makes it hard to monetize it really makes it hard to cash it in in theory if I'm bullish um, eBay and I think it's gonna close at 55 okay what I can do is I can buy the 54 and a half, sell two of the 55s. Actually, it's not a, it's too tight. Let me use a, uh, another example that would make more sense. So, Chipotle. Oops. eBay is like we're talking pennies, so it's a little hard to make the point. Okay, Chipotle. Let's say I. I'm bearish Chipotle, okay? <laughs> I should have used Tesla, but anyway, I'm not gonna change the window again. Uh, let's say I'm bearish Chipotle, and I think it's going to come down to 610, all right? So I, I can do a put butterfly. I'll buy the 630 put, I mean, I'll buy the 620 put. I'll sell two 610 puts. So now I have extra risk. 
And then to cover that extra risk, I'll buy one more of the 600 put. That's why it's called a butterfly. I got plus one, minus two, plus one. So overall, even if it goes to zero, my maximum loss is covered. I, it's finite, it's what I pay for the spread. So ideally, in this situation, it, the spread will cost pennies, you know, 30 cents, 50 cents, whatever it is. But uh, I can, the most I can profit is if price falls exactly or close to uh, my 610, which I'm short of two, right? And expires there. That's the maximum I can make. But that's in theory. When it comes to actually monetizing it, it doesn't work out very well, especially with fast moving stocks. So you can do um, a broken wing, like a lopsided one of these. So if I know, if I think it's going to pin at 610, what I like to do is I like to buy one 630, sell two of the 610, and buy a 600. So see how it's lopsided? I have more room to cover here between the one bot and the two sold and then the one bot this is easier to monetize and it's still leveraged not as much so it's not pennies it's probably a buck but the upside is three four times sometimes so you can triple and quadruple your money and the pin is a little more wishy-washy so it's not doesn't have to be 610 you know the best case scenario so it's easier for real life trading that's all I'm saying. And that's what I did with Tesla. I did December put um, the broken wing. So, and I wanted to come down to 200. And to finance it, I completely paid for it by doing an iron condor that expires next week. But I closed it this week and the, that paid for my put position. So the put position itself is up 30%. But really, I can't quantify how much it's up because I didn't pay anything for it. So everything is gravy from here for me. For, but the put position that. Uh, broken wing is up 30% on paper. I have not tried to monetize it. I have not tried to cash it in. I'm sitting on it. It's free. It'll pay a lot if Tesla falls quite a bit. So uh, speaking of Tesla, why not show you the picture actually? Dang nabbit. TSLA. This is Tesla. <laughs> I look at it, I see nothing but ominous pictures in front of me, you know, and on top of it, I originally didn't like it. I don't think they have innovation that's clear. I think they have a lot of headwinds in front of them. What works in California is not going to work in Detroit under ICE. Have the batteries been tested long term with ICE and starting? I don't know. All these are question mark. Um, you know, yes, every five seconds on the street where I drive in Southern California, I see a Tesla in all kinds of shapes and colors. But they're all the same model and the X is now delayed and the battery if anything goes on with the battery factory all their production line down the road is going to be hampered tremendously and a lot is riding on it and I've covered that before I don't want to harp on it again so it has a lot going against it so 200 is not that crazy in my opinion as far as downside is concerned I'm, that's all I'm saying about Tesla and eBay we talked uh, TLT if somebody wants to short the market one can go along the TLT this is what, pres what represents the, the bonds you know, when they say bonds are up this is the bonds and it, it, that is that one crazy spike that we had where the TNX which represents the 10 year broke down for like a fraction of a second and that was a turnaround and the markets recovered this is when the markets got tested and this is when the markets recovered you see how it inversely trades with the market so today look at this candle up one percent one point one percent one point four percent actually i must have looked at it earlier and uh markets were gr flat on a day like that they should the market should not be flat look we had two green markets day before and it was red so it all makes sense but anyway um so to short the market you can go long this guy if you think he's going to recover and regain uh, higher levels then uh, you buy a call spread here you'd be shorting the market if you want to go along the markets you buy puts in this guy because this guy's going to fall as markets rise if i expand it to two years you can see um you know a, a big zoom out I'll, i always like to zoom out just to see where it's been and where it's coming from Whoa. what is that a bowl 
and another bowl technically not a real cup and handle but the spirit of it they tried to sell it and they nicely defended it and then they sharply defended it so assuming that this was a mistake the correction we just had it's a nice bowl is this the start of a handle here and if that's the case then there's this much upside to be had with this guy i don't know and does this qualify as an inverse head and shoulders i'm not that good a technician to to, to drink but the spirit is there they sold it they defended it they sold it they defended it they sold it they defended it even better so i don't know it looks bullish it may have more upside bonds so markets might have some downside this is a two-year term so TLT is another way you can short the market safely I'm not saying do it I'm just giving ideas um, important question somebody said do you like selling in the money spreads I do not uh, they just come with complications just today I noticed um, a, a friend of mine well an acquaintance of mine that actually um, got assigned Apple because of dividends if you're short a call you uh, anyway if if you're short something in the money you're gonna get acted on or you, you're liable you you're open to being acted on and usually you get acted on around dividend times because I don't know if this person knows that he's gonna owe he's gonna aside from the fact that he may have lost money on the trade he's gonna owe dividends what yes <laughs> you'll wake up and your account is down how much does Apple pay in dividends uh, let's go charts this one should show that's not Apple forty seven cents so forty seven cents he's gonna owe for however big a position I don't know how big a position it is so you're gonna have to deliver the dividends too so uh, not a good position so they said they asked the question was there in theory okay so when you do a credit spread if it's all in the money and you get paid the full value because you sold the spread all in the money for example if I think that um, let me see if I can bring in here where is it can I let's change this to spread vertical okay if I sell I want to show I'm trying to find a good way this is the mark this is the theoretical value of the spread okay and this is what are we looking at RUT so th these are the small caps all right so this RUT currently is 1170 something right so way higher than 1095 if I expect a drop from 1170 to 1095 I can sell this spread collect five bucks almost and uh, there's no downside risk because I'm collecting the full loss uh, you know so to speak if price drops to that uh, it, it's gonna drop in price so see how price drops as I get out of trouble right so if the price of the RUT is gonna drop I collected five dollars it can only get better from here that's the width of the spread okay ten cents but first of all I don't think anybody will pay you five dollars to open the spread and second of all it just creates issues somehow they come out the issues I don't like doing that that's highly speculative and it is unrealistic but if you're expecting that market crash okay maybe you could do that uh, I I tried to do that with Amazon one time on earnings I said well they're gonna get punished hard and I tried to sell a spread it was a whole lot of work for coming out as scratch like um, uh, you know win uh, and it was a whole lot of work and effort and and if you get assigned then you not only are you but in the Amazon and um, you get you know margin issues and you get surprises and somebody might get the jump on you, you issues come out so I don't like doing that and uh, maybe buying in the money spreads is a little bit safer but uh, actually if it's a single leg buying I'd be feel comfortable about it because if you're buying a spread then you're short one and long one yes you're protected but then that just creates drama on uh, you know undo drama I couldn't explain it I don't have a reason I said you know what just go try it 
it's and see how it works out for you if you find a way of making it work for you then good kudos <laughs> okay so um, the one thing i wanted to mention also um is on the nasdaq was it did i make it on the nasdaq i can't remember i made a note on the chart maybe on the cues <laughs> maybe in the weeklies <laughs> anyway i thought it was a point that okay I, th I may have done it already so i'm gonna duplicate myself the the spirit of it the nasdaq made the jump Ah, uh, <laughs> i think i remember where i did it nope not here made the jump on did you there this is what i wanted to show the bubble here i may have covered it already so apologies this big leap based on a super surprise for everybody uh, the japanese qe to infinity okay so we need another one of these in order to change levels if not we're extended out you know like uh, if you carry a weight away from your body how long can you hold it up and how far uh, you, can your arm extend without dropping so Another reminder is that Draghi today, this week, didn't say anything new. He didn't offer anything new. He just said what he always says, and he promised what he always promises, except uh, he's, now we, we think it's going to be, we thought it was going to be this time, but we think it's going to be by December or January. So now it's a little more concrete with time. I think the sell-off is going to come out pretty hard if he fizzles out next time. I mean, the chance, I mean, what? Are they going to believe him again when he says something and doesn't deliver? Can you imagine the run we would have had this week had he actually delivered something? Oh, my gosh. 2100, I, you know, would not have been crazy to expect this week if he had actually delivered it. So um, I, I'm glad he didn't just because it would have skewed things so badly that trading would just be... Um, equivalent to gambling you know um, fundamentals be darned I'm so happy that we were done with the Fed here kind of uh, one version of it which is the QE and I'm happy that they didn't extend another QE because we really don't need it we're not with employment uh, unemployment being five and change 5.8 percent um, but you know we still have the rates artificially low and I'm okay with that I don't want to pay more for my house than I have to so now they're starting to do what we did years ago and it looks like they have issues so again the uh, chipotle is doable google i would not in a rush price line not in a rush although i like both i want to catch both knives but not in a rush twitter same story but i don't like it as much as priceline and google Priceline is google more of a sure thing twitter more of a speculative play alibaba i like it just for the same reasons of price line of Google, except I don't have to wait. It's up 15% probably since it's low this week. I, th I thought I saw a 99 print on it, so it's $115 almost. So um, that is an incredible move. Uh, gold, not too happy about that. I'm not too excited about it. Uh, eBay, I like it. Again, not in a rush. Call Calendar, I, I like it a lot better than anything else uh, on it. Um, selling in the money calls and the spreads uh, not so attractive to me one can short the market via going along the TLT Tesla somebody asked me if it's in a wedge I didn't quite understand what they meant uh, but I gave you my opinion on Tesla and I'm short it um, based on fundamentals and technicals and based on just that I don't like it <laughs> and uh, Draghi delivered uh, wind and we thought it was great that's it Sorry for taking your time, but um, I, I'm trying to do more of these specific trades this way, that better than just a uh, talking head on fundamentals. Because the same thing over and over. The thesis has not changed. It may, so far, no change. Uh, Nick, signing off. 34 minutes. Sorry.